for the second season and perhaps worth picking out as a significant strength the potential line out ability up front with the six foot eight all black jock ross six foot six wales b international john collins and the all-round skills of that new barbarian kevin barring exceptional strength too i'd say in the three-quarter line with the midfield pairing of wales center bob ackerman in cracking form at the moment and another powerful man alongside him new zealander Dan Fui, plus the exciting skills, of course, on the wing of Welsh international Clive Rees and the young Jeremy Hughes. So the reigning champions, Bristol, proudly uh, showing the John Player Special Cup flag today in this uh, breezy afternoon. Bristol, the reigning champions, but only eight of the side from last year's final, severely disrupted by injury problems, which leave them without Bob Hesford, John Doubleday and Dave Sorrell. But the sort of trouble that former England flanker Mike Rafter as captain is used to making light of but a big onus on the new recruits two of them teenagers Ian Gauntlet at centre alongside the highly promising Ralph Nibs and the 19 year old prop Creighton Phillips with 22 year old number eight Mark Wyatt but still superbly served at half back Stuart Barnes on England's bench next week Richard Harding too and of course Alan Morley world's leading try scorer and the man to snap up any chance that comes his way and there, Bob Ackerman, the man who scored that spectacular try for Wales against Ireland this season. And the man who scored a fair few in his time for club and for country, Clive Rees. Promising midfield talent of Ralph Nibs. And Stuart Barnes, upon whose shoulders a great deal rests today. Mike Rafter, the man who led both club and county to championship titles, the first man ever to have that achievement, and a great leader of men, Mike Rafter. The referee from Manchester and the Lancashire Society, Alan Wellsby, who coincidentally refereed the semi-final of the cup between these two sides 11 seasons ago. And so it's Bristol this cold afternoon to start the match. And a place in the quarterfinals at stake. And tidily put away by David Slater. The man who's established himself in the London Welsh first team. So a full stand on the far side. Line out, Peter Stiff. Compression there by London Welsh, and it's a penalty to Bristol for that line out obstruction. So there's the distance for Stuart Barnes, the Oxford University fly half. So just short of the London Welsh 10 metre line. Not a bad effort, but uh, off to the right. So the quick one leaves it for Slater. Harding. Greenway. So both full backs being uh, tested out on this big occasion and both equal to every challenge so far. Peter Stiff and at the back there, Pomfrey on the short line. Pomfrey it is, worked. Stiff. Well, back to Harding. Barnes tries the drop goal. Superb. That really went like clockwork, the whole movement. The short line out. One by Pomfrey. Stiff round to set it up quickly and well. Good physical presence by the big second row. Sweetly back from Harding and Barnes bang on target. Very encouraging start for Bristol, that. Beautifully executed. Referee waits for any possible Bristol advantage. The ball not travelling the 10 metres. Uh, Rafter uh, encouraging the players these early minutes to settle down. And interesting to see how Bristol went through pretty thorough warm-up session in the gym alongside the stand before kickoff. 
allowing them to start the game with a bang. The Welsh put on the wheel. And offside. So Bristol in these opening minutes clearly enjoying being on their home ground in a cup game. The first time for two seasons. Hoisted by Barnes. And away by Greenway. Yes, this is in fact the first time Bristol have been at home in a John Player Cup tie for two seasons. Despite the fact that Bristol went right through to the final last year, every round was an away game. Well back, Barnes, Nibs, runs into light. Off from Harding again. Morley, cleverly placed. Back there is Clive Rees. The ball's loose, but a knock-on. Paledri and Morley over together. There's Paledri claiming the try, but the knock-on right on the London West line. But what a lovely touch. Perfect judgment from Alan Morley. No wonder he picks up all those tries. And pressure really on London Welsh. Greenway and... Robin Pritchard, Alan Morley there, and what a little individual battle we've got this afternoon with Alan Morley and Clive Rees opposing each other. Bristol's throw on the London Welsh line. Pomfrey. Bristol drive, trying to roll it round to get over the line, claiming the try, not given. No clear view of who had their hands on the ball over the line. So, attacking side scrummage, Harding with the feed. <laughs> Against the head, but a penalty given for luring by the London Welsh front row. And here's a nice uh, tap penalty variation by the look of it. Harding, Pomfrey, try. London Welsh not knowing where to put their resources. Pomfrey on the charge and unstoppable. And sadly, Robin Pritchard looks to have been the man who got the uh, brunt of that attack by Bristol and has received a bad cut and what a blow that is to London Welsh but happily they have a more than able replacement in Ian George standing by the conversion just goes left of the post seven points to nil 12 and a half minutes gone and London Welsh then disrupted with the injury to their scrum half Robin Pritchard. So London Welsh up against it. D David Slater on the restart. That's Paledri. Harding. There's uh, Corky Harding, a canny player. England 19 and B International as Ian George takes up his uh, familiar berth Bristol 22 winning line out again by Bradley Slater meant to hoist it further Phil Q slicing it Ted Lewis, two, Collins in the middle, Ross at the back. Barring it is, clearing it up, Ian George, that was a lovely feed, but all called back for the crooked throw into the line-out. <laughs> On 
Shrill blast from Alan Wellesby. Foot up, free kick to London Welsh. So what option will they take here? Obviously no direct kick at goal. And this is one they've been practicing on training nights. The forward drive. Extra weight from Bradley. Ian George flips it up. Greenway, Reese. Well, they did well. So Clive Reese gets one back. And London Welsh retaliate in style. Ian George and tapped on Greenway, managing to flip it through, and Clive Reese diving over. So Greenway trying to put London Welsh within a point. No. But still a try to hearten London Welsh and the promise of a spectacular match here. Quickly fed for Harding, Barnes, angle to the corner. Classy touch. Peter Stiff, unbending a little. All three, all three, tidy. 15 metres out from the London Welsh line. Again, London Thank Welsh you. tie up the line out. Ian George clears it well. Pomfrey at the back, varying the length. Fly head through by Morgan. And again, referee deciding to throw in. Was not straight enough, did not produce any advantage for the non throwing inside. So London Welsh get the put in on their 22 metre line. Not straight into the scrummage by Ian George. Well, the referee, in fact, deciding it's a, it's a full penalty. Scuffed it a bit, but it just had the legs. Well, a smile of relief, I think, as much as anything. He knew that he didn't strike that one properly, but uh, it'll do. So 12 minutes to half time and a six point lead for Bristol. It's their own ball, as you saw. BRFC. Away by Barnes. A player who certainly uh, made his name in the England selectors' notes books this last season or two. Collins, George, Slater, Fui. Burst straight through the attempted tackle of Gauntlet there, who's still lying injured. Having bounced off the uh, big New Zealand centre. Slater again. Teasing Phil Q with that well placed kick. Half time whistle goes. And Bristol in a very entertaining half, a try apiece, but it is Bristol that lead by a clear six points. While attention is required for Ian Gauntlet. So back to. Uh, Full strength at the start of the second half. Ackerman, but out on the full, so they'll scrummage back. So Bristol take the initiative again at the start of the second half.
whistle now on the London Welsh 22, Stuart Barnes. It'll come down with snow on it. Peter Stiff. Paledri. Wyatt. Wyatt all the way. What a moment for the young number eight. Well, a hoisted ball. Looked initially fairly innocuous, but... Uh, came down into the arms eventually of Peter Stiff who set it up and then a real tremendous striding run by Mark Wyatt all the way to the line and Bristol what a perfect start to the second half so 14 points to four but that's how it stays Barnes some way off target but uh, the Bristol joy tempered by Ian Gauntlet leaving the field and off to the dressing room. Took that to knock just before half time. So down to 14 men, Bristol, but 14 points to four is their lead. Away by Stuart Barnes. So Hoggett is then who'll resume his partnership with Ralph Nibs. <laughs> Ackerman plays it right deep into the Bristol 22. So London Welsh in uh, great need of a score now. Ten points adrift. But uh, Bristol beginning to get more of the line-out possession than they were enjoying earlier. It was Peter Stiff. Good surge by the Bristol Pack, still in possession. Now to Harding. Wyatt again. This big number eight, the youngster, feeds through to Williams. Links through to Hogg. Morley now. Outside is Phil Q. Supporting is Hogg. Morley nibs inside. Simon Hogg just short of the line. And through for the try goes Stuart Barnes. What a magnificent score. Well, who said Cup Rugby's goal? quite magnificent a try that started way down in the Bristol 22 with the breakout after the good forward drive the feed to Harding and then again it was Wyatt the young number 8 the 22 year old who stormed up the field and managed to find the link through and then the interplay with Williams linking to the rest of the threes and then Nibs, Morley Q back inside and finally Barnes in support Barnes conversion off target but a great joy with the try like that 18 points to four five minutes into this second half and while that conversion was taking place it was Brian Morgan who went off who earlier I think pulled a hamstring and his replacement is Richard John a hooker so troubles piling up now for London Welsh Peter Stiff well the crowd's still a buzz after that uh, superlative Bristol score that uh, reflected great credit on the whole team try to savour that one and uh, really lifting this game up to the highest class and goes uh, Dave Palmer Harding Barnes Greenway underneath Ackerman Phil Q Greenway again 
still not in touch. Nibs on the counter attack. Listen to the crowd. Well, not the quickest man to feed it to, but uh, Shepard sets it up nevertheless. Harding, Barnes, Hogg. And Bristol on the ascendant. Well, the side have certainly made light of the changes they were forced to make this week with three players of 600 appearances for Bristol between them having to drop out and a trio of youngsters who came in with only 23 matches for Bristol between them. That's how Bristol have made light of it. Bruce Bradley now trying to stir his London World side. And indeed how much the home crowd are enjoying seeing Bristol on their own ground in the cup. Ian George trying to play London Marsh out of trouble. Jock Ross at the line out on the halfway line. Variation, well, it worked. Stuart Barnes. the ball then, Simon Hogg hands up Clive Reese. Inside is Pumphrey. Rafter. Morley the link. Q. Nibs. Not too much support outside. Wyatt. Harding, Rafter, Paledri. Hogg. Morley. Hogg again. Barnes. Pumphrey. Another brilliant score. They've done it again. And this is vintage Bristol. Even Rafter applauding his own side. Pumphrey, the man to run that one off. Hogg it was who really made the incisive running. And then the interplay between him and Alan Morley. And then when they'd done their bit, steaming up on the inside was Nigel Pomfrey to go over unchallenged and another magnificent try 11 minutes into the second half and Bristol 22 points to 4 the third try of this second half and all by Bristol Pomfrey the man to score it so it's Hogg with the conversion attempt taking it from Barnes and that runs it off in style the man who came on as replacement. Well, that certainly has uh, confounded, I think, even the optimists amongst the Bristol supporters who've seen this side come together so well. Well, can London Welsh come back now? That onslaught of three tries in the space of 11 minutes of the second half. Stuart Barnes. down to George Slater took it well looks for the support well the nearest London Welsh have been to breaking through the Bristol defence for quite a while that's the man not on hand really quickly enough to support Slater then gets ahead but a full penalty it is to Bristol as the front rows came in and I don't know what Bruce Bradley said but Alan Wellesby is having none of it extra 10 metres upfield tap penalty taken by Paledri off goes Pomfrey almost intercepted by Fui bit careless by Hogg and the referee has judged the deliberate knock on so Bristol again Barnes 
Well, looking very much the accomplished fly half. Well, up in the committee box, some uh, smiling faces there. Tom Marney, the Bristol secretary, with the glasses and the cap. And some other well-contented people of the Bristol persuasion. Well, that's a very happy position for Bristol to be in with 16 minutes to go. Uh, really emphatically subduing the challenge of London Welsh. Cohesive efforts of the pack really tell all. Stuart Barnes. Greenway taken wild but almost isolated by the Bristol pincer movement that came in to surround him. There's uh, a second row who really have done so much to put Bristol on top like this. Pomfrey and Stiff. Pomfrey, of course, an England tourist, made his name really as a flanker on that tour of the Far East. Dummy scissors and uh, the long feed picked up by Q. Tackled by Ackerman. Fui slips it back. But London Welsh being taken down one at a time away from Rafter, but they're called back. And that stops a certain try. The whistle had already gone, and Bristol get the scrum. goes Wyatt. Harding taken neatly that by Rafa. And how about that for a touch of flowers? And Morley's clean through. Alan Morley unstoppable. Try number 403 in first class rugby. The world record holder makes it again. A try in every game but one of the last 14 games he's played and increasing that world record also of 315. Now 316 tries for Bristol. Well, lovely work by uh, Rafter and then the reverse pass. Morley did the rest. Over from Simon Hogg and it's becoming a rout. Try number five for Bristol, four of them in this second half onslaught. Well, that was a classic of its kind, the way that uh, Rafter took that pass from Harding. And then the reverse pass to Morley at full speed and just carved his way through. Another brilliant effort from Bristol. And such is the confidence that the wag in the stand cries out on Bristol a push over try all the way. <laughs> it's London Welsh with the feed five metres from the Bristol line. Bowering, controlling. And London Welsh uh, putting the pressure on this time. Still about a metre short. Harding trying to extricate himself the whole time. George Slater, Ackerman took it well. Off balance, Nibs caught him. But it's a penalty to London Welsh for Bristol being offside at the set scrum. So just one try to London Welsh. At a time when they were evenly contesting the match midway through the first half. There's the flying wedge. Still in possession. London Welsh are there and over for the try. And it looks like Bruce Bradley, the captain, that scored it. Consolation, at least. Bradley there. The London Welsh captain. Making uh, the scoreline look just that little bit more respectable but only 11 minutes remain and it would be a remarkable long haul back. Can Greenway put London Welsh into double figures? Uh, 
Not been that sort of day for London Welsh, really. Not much has gone right. Drop Ross. One back by Pomfrey. But uh, a whistle for a scrum, the ball having gone forward. Well, Mike Rafter there on the flank will be no doubt delighted with this. It certainly proves the strength and depth that Bristol have. Free kick for London Welsh. And Bristol certainly not back the 10 metres. Ian George again. Slater. Thank you. Caught by Fui and Ackerman. pointing out that this Bristol side has 10 former Colts players in it. Some of effective proving ground that must be. Bristol Colts who last year had an unbeaten season. Barring now though for London Welsh. Ian George standing off, intercepted by Morley. Will he make it the whole way? Across comes Slater. Support inside, Paledri, Nibs, a chance now on the left, Stuart Barnes, Hogg, Hogg all the way, lovely dummy. Oh, what a spectacle this has been. Well, the cries of easy rise up from the stand. Try number six for Bristol as London Welsh threw everything into all-out attack. The interception allowing Morley to race down the wing and then when held, the pass inside and the eventual link across the midfield through Nibs and then Hogg with Gareth Williams quite closely marked just selling the dummy and racing through to the post. So the replacement centre trying to convert his own try. And it's up to 36 points. So six tries for Bristol. And what a wonderful day for youngsters to watch rugby at its best from Bristol. Just to land it on one of our cameras. <laughs> and a special cheer for that and a rising applause from the crowd to salute an exceptional Bristol performance. And uh, for Mike Rafter, what a triumph. Bristol with six tries and the onslaught came really early in the second half and that turned the tide in no uncertain fashion. Three tries in the space of 11 minutes that left London well stone dead, but they, I'm sure, will be the first to applaud the Bristol performance today, the forwards coming together, the cohesive effort, the superb organisation and inspiration of Mike Rafter. And who's to say that Bristol are not worthy champions? And when asked the question in that form, who is going to stop them from winning the title again? Bristol triumphant. Well, a brilliant performance sat by Bristol and no doubt London Welsh, uh, their performance affected by their injury troubles.